I really want to cosplay as Rin or Haru. How are you? Uh, Woo! Cool. Like my jacket? Yes! Go free. <laughs> yes. Hold on. <laughs> I have to tell you a story, but I don't want to have to yell, so. Um, nice case. Yeah. Thank you. Star Trek. Star Trek. <laughs> Blow on it. Blow on it. <laughs> it's not working. Just a show, maybe? Uh, the awkwardness. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just smash it against Winder's head as um, revenge. <laughs> Instead of the wrench, you use Mike. When they get it working, the first thing you'll hear is Darth Vader. <laughs> I like how he's just like looking at and he's like, I'm ready. <laughs> oh, best star to best star to panel ever. It's not on. We're just gonna randomly hear something. We're just gonna randomly hear something. Yes, I'm recording this. <laughs> yes, awkward beginning of video. But it's epic. Was anybody using this microphone in the previous panel? No. Oh, that's right. Samurai Dan's kind of loud. <laughs> He has a built-in microphone. Yep. This is awkward. Oh, see if you can get this working for me, please. I'll come and focus there again. The mic is green. Hi! Hi! Um, I uh, had to wear this because I promised. Well, I didn't have to. I wanted to. Uh, I was at a convention. Where was that? I can't remember. <laughs> was it? Yes. It was SakuraCon in Seattle, great cool. convention. And I was, uh, I was there uh, a month or so ago, it was Easter weekend, and uh, I was at this, I went to eat dinner at this seafood place, because that's what you do in <laughs> Seattle. And uh, I walked by a table of people wearing these jackets. Yes. And I was like. <laughs> <laughs> and I went over and said hi to everybody, and, and I, I noticed this guy was wearing this jacket. And it's really nice, like it's lined, and it's like a full-on sweat jacket, like a workout jacket. And I said, uh, man, that's really, really nice. I've been looking for a nice one. And every time I go to a convention and they're selling them, they're never big enough. And he said, well, try this one on. And he took it off, and gave it to me, and I put it on, I'm like, oh, it fits. <laughs> and he was like, it's yours. I'm like, no, 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 no. I could never do that. And he was like, no, 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 I want you to have it. I would be happy for you to have it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and yeah, you better not do that. Uh, brain damage. And if he tries to pronounce my last name. And, uh, and so he said, all I ask is that when you go to a convention, wear it, wear it at a panel sometime. And so that's what I'm doing. So um, I will also tell you a little secret that we've shot some bonus material for free. Yay! Some very, very, very fun bonus material for free. And I will not tell you any more about than that because it's awesome, but it's a surprise. So uh, we watch it for that, and I got to wear the jacket in the, in the bonus stuff too, so that was fun. Um, for those of you that are just here, because some friend dragged you and you don't know why you're here. Or for the parents that may be like, why am I here? <laughs> my name is I'm Ben Manana. It's so easy. Manana. Tomorrow in Spanish. Manana. Okay. I was just in Cancun. What about McDerp-a-derp? -derp? We always speak Spanish. 
And they got it. They, they were like, oh, manana, like tomorrow. I'm like, yes, See, you guys know. So, um, manana. But you can just call me Vic. That's well, what about my derp or derp? It, is just not say it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give your tongue spasms. <laughs> um, it's Italian, though. Uh, like you, like lasagna. Right? L-A-S-A-G-N-A. The G-N, little, yeah. little language lesson here. Yeah. The G-N combination in Italian makes the nya sound. Like bologna, <laughs> lasagna, <laughs> filet mignon. So if you were in the old country, where my family come from, you would say, Pasta! No. <laughs> you would say, Mignonia. But, uh, but who wants to say that? Anyway, I'm going to come down here. Um, I'm so glad you guys are here. This is like my favorite time. My favorite hour and 25 minutes of the show. Because I love to talk with you guys about anything you want to talk about and uh, share things that I'm working on and, and uh, share things that you're interested in. Before we get started, let me tell you that uh, I, a lot of, I, I said this in the opening ceremonies yesterday, but many of you may not have been here. How many of today is your birthday? Okay, fair enough. Um, I brought a bunch of music CDs and some concert DVDs. That I music CD and it's fine. Uh, a Full Metal Alchemist called Full Metal Fantasy. Did anyone get one yesterday? Not yet. No, not not yet. I can't afford one. Not yet! Can I have one? Can I have one, can I have one for free? Right here right now. What? Can I have one? I will can you have one right here right yeah. now? No, it's, uh, the concert is great. The, the music is great. It's a live concert. It sounds great. It's got music from Full Metal, Dean Angel, Oran High School, <gasps> DBZ. All theme songs that I've sung, and a lot of original stuff, great music. But also, it has this little live action parody that we made years ago. Me and some of the other voice actors cosplaying as our characters. It's right there. He can so see it. let your mind run wild with that image for a while. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I'll have those at the table as well. I'm doing autographs right after this. Um, so I'll hope to see you there. Um, also, you guys, um, I'm working on a lot of new things. Oh, somebody asked me the other day about ringtones. I put a bunch of ringtones on, on the uh, iTunes. Oh. Like, like, you can buy them through the phone. I've got Edward Elric ringtone, oh, Tamaki voicemail, oh. and Ikaku from I Bleach, and uh, all kinds of great stuff that you can use to you know, answer your phone, or if somebody calls your phone and they get voicemail. So um, those are all available. As far as what I'm working on right now, I know somebody's gonna be, what are you doing right now? Well, working on free. Very excited about that. Um, got a lot of hate about that. What? Did you see any of that? Yeah. No. Uh, yes. Well, it, it's really sad. I guess I started. Um, there are some he has to do the, the coffee line for me. I forgot to get him a thing of little like instant coffee. I was gonna get him for that. Get him that. But I can't afford it. We're trying. We're trying. Sorry? Don't die, Vic. The sound guy disappeared mid Saturday of the convention, main events. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Perfect. Um, <laughs> like a horror movie. Okay. Uh, <laughs> like a horror movie. <laughs> right. Um, you know what, guys? I, I've been thinking a lot about this, and I, I talked about it a little bit. Um, if you can even plug in a wired mic, I'll take it, guys. If you can even give me a cabled microphone, I'll take it. Cashew? Cashew. What? Cashew! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can even give me a wired mic. Just a plug in mic. <laughs> I know what happened. Sound guy sabotaged it and went to Bermuda. <laughs> 
It's like a horror movie. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I want to get a go out. Series here oh, and he'll like come up to me and be like, we're gonna have fun. So just let me say this. <laughs> and uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to trust in your maturity. There are some really mean spirited people out there. And I, I have certainly endured more than my share of the flies and rumors. You know, and that's par for the course, you know? I mean, like, you go to the grocery stores, you see the National Enquirer, right? And the Star Magazine. And they make up all of these outrageous <laughs> things. Bless you, Steve. Bless you. They make up all of these outrageous things about celebrities. Why? Psychologically, why do they do it? No, really, why? Why it do they do it? Psychologically. It sounds so. What are they playing upon? It gets attention. They're playing upon people's desire to feel to know something about somebody. Like, all of these people that just live, you know, they have their lives and, and they're not famous, and you know what I mean? They don't have a lot of people that know who they are. But man, wouldn't it be salacious for you to know who Brad Pitt's baby really is? You know what I mean? Or, or there are, no, not, not you, but there are millions of people out there who really want to know about other people's lives. They want to feel like they know something secretive because it makes them feel important. It makes them feel powerful in some weird way. And unfortunately, our industry is no different. There are people out there, kids maybe, uh, even tw in their 20s, who feel very alone. They're very alone. And they feel like nobody knows who they are but they have the power of the internet. <laughs> they can sit in their little room in the middle of nowhere and send out stuff that thousands of people can read and can cause horrible damage and pain to people they may have never even met or certainly have never done anything to them. So I... I was when when the when the free thing happened when the cast announcement happened, and they announced that I was going to be playing Queen. A lot of people started coming out. Not a lot, a handful of people. The problem is they make a lot of noise. You ever notice that that the, min the minority always makes so much noise that it seems like they're more than they are. But a minority of people came out and started making noise and saying hateful, horrible things about me that aren't even remotely true. And I, I was brokenhearted. And you know why? Because I have spent 15 years going to conventions. And I have met tens of thousands of people. And I have never once been cruel to a fan, or unkind, or rude, or mean. Because I love them, and I want I want to make your experience special. Yes, you do. So to have these people go online and make up these horrible things was really heartbreaking to me. And I started thinking about it, and somebody wrote me one day and said, "It's really, it's really sad to see these, to see that even somebody in your position in the anime industry gets bullied." That was the word they used, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, you're right." That's what it is. But here's where it gets surprised. I have received scores of emails from fans. Anime fans. People are not fans. Do you know what they tell me? How they get bullied. back and it's like how they get made fun of because they're anime, because they are a little different, they get ostracized at school, they don't have a lot of friends. Family makes one of them this or that, blah, 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 different color hair, wearing different clothing. And they talk about how they love the anime industry because they feel like a part of the family. They feel like they're in a fandom that gets them. You follow me? And yet here we are in the anime industry. And people within the anime industry are bullying their own. Isn't that sad? 
You would think if there was ever a place that you would not be bullied. It was in a fan base where lots of people were bullied, and they know what it's like, and it hurts them. You would think they would be the last people to be bullied. But such is people, people's desire for attention. If I were to get online and write about this gentleman right here and say that he, you know, I saw him stumbling around drunk at a convention hitting on a young girl, it wouldn't even matter that I just ruined his reputation. All that would matter to the person that wrote it is, woohoo, 15 people liked my post. <laughs> you, see my, you see my point? That's all they care about is the attention, being noticed. It doesn't even matter that they just did horrible damage to you. So I want to challenge you guys. I want to ask you guys to do something. Be a voice for good. Be a voice for positivity. Be a voice for love and support and enthusiasm. There's a very, very famous quote that I like to share with people. The only thing necessary for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. Let that sink in for a minute. If you read these horrible things online and you sit there and go, man, isn't that sad that they make that stuff up, but you don't do anything, you know what I mean? Then nothing changes. And that handful of people hijack your fandom. Don't let that happen. There are a lot more of you than there are of them. So when you see that kind of thing online, speak up. Be a voice for good. And let's, let's shut that stuff down and not let, them, not let them bring such negativity to the anime fan world that we love so much. Okay? All right. Phone memory, so it's just like, yes, I can record the long video in the time room. <laughs> See, look, I have like so much left. Um, okay, I love this jacket, but it's very warm. <laughs> call it a sweat jacket. Um, oh, yeah. Um, okay, so that was my little adventure into the deep end of the pool. So now let's have some fun and kind of talk about whatever you want. Now, I will warn you, warning's not really the right word. I will let you know, I've been struggling with a really bad cough uh, the, last, the last few days. It's okay. So, um, I still love you. I'm going to ask you to have mercy on me, and uh, we won't be doing any uh, short rants. Aww. Aww. <laughs> Dang it. For me. <laughs> Love that. I'll fly you around the country and let you do it. <laughs> and uh, or Broly, no kakarots. Um, you can even hear them. Just, just, yeah. Just yeah. In fact, what's the lady that's the, the Japanese singer that's here? Uh, the band's yes. Kaza, but I don't. Last know. night she said, "Oh, I would love it if you would come and sing uh, a song with me in my concert tomorrow night." And my first thought was, "Yes, I would love that." And then my second thought was, I, I'll sound like garbage by tomorrow night, Aww. so I don't think I'll be able to do it. But um, let's talk about, hold on one second. Uh, I wish to apologize for the lack of sound and everything. Uh, there seems to be water in the wires oh. coming from the what? roof. That's why the sound is not working. Oh. Uh -oh. We have awesome? we have contact. Yeah, that's the okay. that's all the audio in here and everything was connected. Did you just unplug it? Did you unplug it off? We've unplugged it. Uh, we're we called. We went ahead and got the staff of the hotel to be like, hey, there, this is an emergency. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I do apologize. Uh, 
we're going to try to get this working. Uh, our sound person is coming back to okay. get this checking ticket. Well, if the electrical, if this stuff's unplugged, then it's not, then there's no hazard of anything yeah. happening with that. Everything so. should be fine. But, but that's why we do not have any sound. I do apologize. Which is kind of tough on the voice because you got to project the whole time. So I'm going to try okay. to keep it low. So you guys bear with me, okay? Uh, give me a minute. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Um, we will, uh, we will try to... Yay! Thank you, Mother Nature. Usually I say accident. Yeah. Who was my favorite voice to play? You know, I used to be, I used to try to be very delicate with that answer. Because I always knew that whoever asked me the question probably had a voice in mind. Right? Sure. So if this cute little girl right here says to me, who's your favorite character? What am I guessing she's going to look Now, Pam, wouldn't you, wouldn't you be jazzed if I say June Pay is my favorite role? You know, see what I'm saying? And because of my... <laughs> oh, my gosh, two of the same, same role. Um, because I, I want you guys to have a great time, because I want to please you, I often uh, wanted to say whatever you thought, whatever you want. But then something very impactful happened, and uh, and I and it, I could no longer be diplomatic. I had to just basically acknowledge that I did have a favorite, and his name is Edward Elric. Woo! Yes. But let me tell you why. Uh, I went through the whole first series. And I went through the second series, and when we got to the last scene, the last page of the last moment of drama. Oh my gosh, no. And I turned that page over and stared at the last line of the show. And I realized that in all probability, I will not be playing this character. Mm -hmm. I mean, not because I wouldn't, but because there probably won't be any more for me. It'd be great if there were. But there's no reason to believe there's going to be like that. So when I realized that that was probably the last line when he gets on the train after talking to Winry, and uh, <laughs> kills everyone on the train. You know, <laughs> <laughs> no, that doesn't happen. Um, He's playing a little alert. <laughs> he told me how full metal brotherhood ended. <laughs> When uh, when he did when he when he did that last little monologue, I uh, I was just I was really emotionally overwhelmed mm -hmm. myself in the studio. And I thought, man, I love this little pipsqueak so much. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna miss him. I played him long in almost any character I've ever played. So uh, so yeah, I would have to say Ed's my favorite. However. Tomaki is a very close second place. Woo! And I and I and I will say this in all honesty, if I had to pick a favorite character from any video games that I've done, totally yes. June Bay. Love it. <laughs> Question. Yes. Um, okay, this has to be part of the ring. Okay. When you decided to talk, did we're all your top race to start with it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's hope so. <laughs> You guys need to check that out. It's great. Um, let me tell you what she's talking about. A few years back, well, maybe now, probably five, maybe four or five wow. years, maybe six, uh, I was directing a little production, and I asked Todd, who at that point nobody even knew, to be my assistant director. And he and I were sharing a hotel room, and he was sitting on his bed with his MacBook, and I was sitting on my bed with my MacBook. And I looked at him and I said, you know, I'm going to make a tribute video for you. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a jet. I made a video that literally, it was his name, white letters on a black background, that <laughs> nothing. But then this music played, this opera music played underneath it. And, uh, and I put it on, on YouTube, and uh, 
And he said, well, I'm going to make one for you. <laughs> so he made one, but he like started getting pictures from the internet. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, so we're ramping it up now. <laughs> and I made one for him. And I used pictures of him, and I made like a cologne commercial. <laughs> so I all close-ups of his eye, <laughs> and his hand, and, and uh, it was real cheesy. And I thought that was the end of it. And then, of course, he he made another one. Uh -oh. <laughs> and this time, he asked some other voice actors to be in it. Uh -oh. <laughs> and I was like, oh, so this is how you want to do it. Uh -oh. Hey, uh, Cashew, yes, could you grab me a bottle of water? Thanks. Um, so he made this, this, this uh, tribute video with other voice actors. So now he's got real people involved. Uh -oh. oh, gosh. So I decided, okay, I'm going to make something that's going to put him down for good. <laughs> So I made something called Todd Haverford Action Figure. Oh my god! Uh, you see it? Yes, yes. I, I love Todd. I've watched it so many times. I can't hear what he says over there. Action figure in the world, Todd! <laughs> and it's like, really, it's really funny. Check it out. I had Michael Dorn play Dwarf. Oh, yeah. Um, but I thought, okay, there's no way he's going to touch this. I mean, you can't do any better than this. Can't touch this. But <laughs> Todd apparently didn't get the memo. <laughs> because he made another one. <coughs> he made one called CSI Mignogna. <laughs> where basically he was this investigator who was trying to find out who had kidnapped me? Oh. It turned out to be him. <laughs> he had kidnapped me so that he could, you know, whatever, steal all the fans or whatever. Well, then I was certainly, I'm like, okay, this has got to end now. <laughs> and I decided to make the most epic, unparalleled, unable to be rivaled tribute video. And it was called Todd of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> now, you guys, am I wrong? It's epic. It's like, yeah. it's like watching it. It's like a little theatrical film. I had somebody doing the voice of, of the elfish woman that does the narration. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sounds just like Mary Elizabeth McGlynn, actually. Hey, can you open my back, Sonny? We made a, it's crazy, it looks like, okay, like the action figure, you know, the action figure commercial? I took the action figure, and I spray painted in gold. <laughs> and then I hung it around my neck. I played pro. <laughs> and the goal was to take the action figure back to Mount Doom and throw it in. So the power of the top could be destroyed for <laughs> You guys have to check it out. It's all online, free to watch. And in fact, on my uh, on the concert DVD, there is a behind the scenes for the making of Todd of the Rings. Yes. Yeah, you can. I uh, will see you at the autograph session. I'll have one. Um, fun stuff. And uh, Todd, I love Todd to death. We we have a fun little rivalry. But it's a friendly rivalry. He is very much the little brother I never had and sometimes wish I didn't. He's Alan in real life. You know what I mean? Those kind of, you know, how many of you have younger siblings? You know, they're always kind of like, I'm the youngest. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. You, know, like, you know what I mean? Uh, I love him to death. I would do anything for him. And uh, he's an extremely talented guy. He beats me out for roles all the time. So, um, so I, I love the guy to death. And I mean, he plays Mr. Spock. In my Star Trek series. I'm gonna get the donuts. Thank out. you. I love get you. The out. Oh, right. Get the donuts out. Because I have to get them up. Hide them. Hide them. Those of you that don't know about this, um, I started a web series about two years ago. That would involve. I'm gonna put them right here so they don't. And that's the original series of Star Trek. Why is he really a fountain? And 
So we rebuilt Captain all of the sets, and I cast it a fun. bunch of friends, <laughs> Chuck Huber, who plays, uh, who you guys voice actor you know, uh, for a lot of shows he plays, Dr. McCoy, and Todd's in it, and uh, anybody ever watch Mythbusters? Woo! Yeah. Woo! Grant Imahara. <gasps> what? Uh, what? Yes. Oh my god, yes. And, he even thinks about that. Bless you, sweet. A very, very special thing. In the original series, years ago, the man who played Scotty was named James Dewan. That was his name. Jimmy Dewan. His son, Chris, is playing his dad's role. Oh my god. Oh. Like he's playing Scotty in the series. Uh, we, have three, we have four episodes now online. We just released a brand new one two weeks ago. We premiered it at Phoenix Comic Con. Uh, go to StarTrekContinues.com, click on episodes, and check them out. Uh, we spared no expense to make them look and feel and sound as much like the original series as possible. Um, episode 5 is already done, and uh, it will be, it's being edited right now, and all the post-production is being done on it, sound design and all of that, and special effects. And it will be released probably in uh, August or September. And then we'll all be going down to the studio to shoot episode six, probably in October or November. For, tomorrow, for today. I don't know if you saw it, but I, I tweeted him the photo of us. And he's just like, yeah. So, uh, I will let you all know what panel we're 